Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's uh, Wednesday morning and I'm up here at Dawes Point just below the Harbour Bridge and I can see a wonderful sunrise about to commence. I can see this beautiful cruise ship coming into dock, the Orion of the Seas, and it's going to be a very warm day on all accounts on this summer's day here in Sydney Town. What I'd like to do today, like I normally do, is go on a walk and talk and go through a book summary, yet another book summary. We've covered over a thousand book summaries. I'm close to uh, 1,450 vlogs in English and I've done 61 in Greek. So I've done over 1,500 vlogs. And today's book summary is entitled No Hard Feelings by an author named Liz Foslian. Foslian. So what we'll do is we'll uh, take a walk down to harbour side there and see this wonderful ship come in and dock up and enjoy this beautiful morning hopefully getting a lovely sunrise as well in the meantime so we'll do a walk and talk and see what we can glean from this book and whether or not there are any life hacks that we can use and incorporate into our daily schedule and, and see if there's anything we can learn and use. So this book here is all about how to get the most out of one's work environment, given that we spend so many hours of every day, so, many, so much time dedicated to working, given that many people are employees and need to work at least eight hours a day, if not longer, to uh, justify and to receive a wage or a salary that will help them uh, pay the bills and hopefully add some luxuries to their lives. So what this book does is it, it acknowledges the fact that many of us work and work long hours in a work environment with other people. And the key message that comes from this author is that we need to shape and structure that work environment in order to leverage and maximize those hours that we have together uh, in order for them to also bring out the best in us and the others around us. So um, the author goes on to say and makes a very valid point, especially in the civilized countries, the first or top tier economies throughout the world, uh, America, uh, many of the European economies, Australia, many of the Asian economies, that for most of us, work provides us with a sense of purpose and can offer, in many ways, instant gratification in the form of praise, uh, raises and promotions. But there also comes a warning from this author as well where she says that the more we tie who we are with what we do, the more, the more we emotionally attach ourselves to our jobs, which can be, I guess, unhealthy is the point that the author is trying to make. Because, as I said, given that most of us spend most of our time working and with other people 
what it does is it gives us a full sense of importance. Um, you know, if you're a CEO or if you're a director or you're a manager or whatever you do in your job, you know, you're a teacher, you're a police person, you're a uh, military leader. Um, a lot of the people take their jobs you know, far too seriously. And as I mentioned before, or as we alluded to before, a lot of people attach you know, who they are to what they do, uh, which can lead to um, some challenges, I guess is what the author is saying. Um, because in our work environments, there are certain rules that we need to follow. And I know that over the years where I've worked, uh, it's always been suggested that you know, we have a clear de de delineation between our work and our personal lives and to, I guess, not include or to be, not to be too emotional when we're in our work environments. But the reality is, according to this author, that we can't quite separate our work life from our emotional life because we all come with emotions. Uh, that's how we're created. Now we're created as humans who have feelings and uh, we can't really suppress those feelings too much for too long, else we, um, we suffer and have other issues. So what the author alludes to in her writing of this book is that one thing that we should try and do is to try and find a workable balance where we can express ourselves freely in our work environments without feeling that we have to uh, be a different person to who we really are. Um, and we've, we've all known, we've all realised, we've all learnt throughout our lives that you can suppress feelings to a certain extent before it becomes unhealthy and things just explode and you know things just are out of control. So what the author is suggesting here is that we need to design, develop, um, create and support work environments that allow people to express themselves from a professional perspective, but also give us room to express our feelings um, at the human level as well. And a healthy work environment, according to this author, is one that fosters this sort of environment. So uh, I'm just getting down here to the harbour side. I'll just cross the road and make sure I don't get smashed and taken out by a car. But there we have the tugboat at the back of that Royal Caribbean cruise ship dutifully um, guiding the ship into the international passenger terminal on this beautiful Sydney summer morning. So what else can we learn from this book? What else can we learn from this author? As we said, most people are taught in their lives to suppress their emotions and ignore their feelings. But what we learn is that doing that over an extended period of time can be damaging and can cause issues uh, because emotions are with us 24 seven. And uh, it's the emotions. This is a really good point as well. It's emotion, it's feeling, it's that up and down that make us humans. 
um, if we don't have emotions or if we're asked to repress, suppress and ignore our emotions that's basically telling us or inviting us to remove our humanity from ourselves and as we said we can't repress our feelings without serious consequences because at the end of the day we need to be true to our values, to our ourselves, to what we've learnt and, um, and to be able to express it in a positive empowering way, I'm not saying to express it in a destructive way but to um, express it in a way which will allow us to feel human and to be human. So the author's first formal point to come from this book is that showing emotions to our co-workers and indulging in those paid days off can help us regain a sense of purpose and each and every one of us have a duty of care to ourselves to make sure that uh, whilst we work hard and we indulge in the, the, the challenges of work-life balance that we do use, we do leverage um, our days off to help us become healthy both physically, mentally, spiritually and emotionally. And each of us have a responsibility and we're all accountable to some way to making sure, according to this author, that we contribute to the healthy environment that we work in, that we uh, uh, help uh, support and encourage a sense of belong belonging and humanization of the workforce so that we all feel as if we're part of this organization, this organism, this place that we work in and we all feel, as I, as I said, comfortable. We all feel that we belong. We all feel that we're contributing. We all feel that we're respected, that we are accepted into the work environment. Um, and it comes from the top. The key message is that these behaviours or these principles, these value principles need to be fostered and to be generated from the top of the organisation um, where people are encouraged to take paid time off, where people are encouraged to indulge in self-care and the care of others around them and that the leaders should set the example on how we should behave in our workplace. So it's not up to the HR department, it's not up to um, uh, any particular individual, but it's the leadership team need to set the standard and uh, filter that down through their organisation. And as we mentioned before, to encourage people to um, live, work and contribute in a way which is going to uh, be sustainable over time and going to help them grow and develop in their role, not just today, but for years to come. So the next point that comes from this author is where the author talks about the fact that emotions, believe it or not, this is an interesting point, that emotions can help us make better decisions. Uh, because at the end of the day, emotions alert us to things that may not be going right 
in our lives or in our organisations, in those work environments. So if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling disappointed, if you're feeling um, hard done by, chances are that those feelings are valid. So what this author here is saying is that we need to embrace, we need to welcome those feelings, we need to address them in some way, shape or form and not to uh, turn our backs on them and not to uh, just, um, I guess, be flippant about those feelings that we may be experiencing. Because we need to make sure that our emotions are real and empowering. Uh, once again, uh, we need to uh, sit and think and assess the emotions, why we're feeling them, those feelings, um, what's caused them, what the source of them is, and to separate them into um, ones that are real and ones that are not real. Because at the end of the day, we can be fooled into feeling a certain way, but sometimes, as we said before, we need to d determine uh, which feelings, which emotions are empowering and which ones are disempowering and to filter the relevant emotions. Make sure that the emotion that you're feeling is the real emotion and not just some imaginary emotion or not some inherited emotion, something that other people have made you feel based on their interpretation. Uh, because at the end of the day, as we say, you know, we all attach meaning to what we, what we are what we do and it's important to attach an empowering meaning to that emotion and that feeling especially in our work lives because the last thing we want to do is to feel down or to feel disappointed and depressed when uh, it's our interpretation of how things are um, which may not be intended because you know not everybody goes out of their way to go to work to cause grief. Sometimes you know, we interpret things in a way that brings us grief, but it's based on our worldview, which may be right and it may be wrong. So what we're saying here is that we need to sit back and think about things and not just react, but to respond in a way which is going to be empowering in a way that's going to strengthen us and make us better and uh, at our role and to give us the, po the, best, you know, the best possible vibe to make sure that we continue to do what we do in our workplaces and as we said before, to contribute to the way other people feel. So what the author is saying here at the end, the last formal point, is that we are all um, invited to partner in our workplaces and to foster learning environments that, which also um, are uh, environments of cooperation and collaboration because in the long term it's the learning, the cooperating and the co collaborating work environments that are going to be the most successful at the end of the day we want to get up and get to and go to work in a place that's going to be fun it's going to enable us to express ourselves to grow develop learn contribute and to work with others uh, rather than to fight ourselves fight fight others and to uh, live in disharmony so um, what we need to understand and to appreciate, according to this author, is that effective teams are the ones that offer psychological safety zones to their employees, where you can think, you can say, 
you can do the things that you do on a daily basis and not feel bad about it. Um, to have the opportunity to uh, have your, your thoughts, to say what you say, to uh, thrash out certain issues, but to know you're doing it in an environment that is safe and protective. I've got to tell you though, working over the years, it does get hard, especially during times of economic downturn, when organisations need to right size and to make certain roles redundant. Uh, because it's the ones who have caused the disharmony, the ones who have uh, complained, that are the ones that usually get filtered out, sadly. So uh, I don't know what the answer is there, I've got to tell you, I don't know what the answer is, because we're encouraged to be open, honest and forthright in what we say and do, and to be honourable. But by the same token, in many work environments, it's those people who exhibit those, uh, those elements are the ones who are usually um, asked to leave when times get tough. Anyway, what else can we learn from this? So the key element, according to this author, is to be a person who collaborates with others, who works with others to bring out the best in their teams. And uh, it's you know, the work environments that support people feeling valued that uh, perform the best but the last point that the author makes is that um, it's not all kumbaya uh, the work environment also needs to be a place a space where we can have some of those awkward conversations um, conversations that are important to the team and to others and to have those conversations in a professional and mature way where we can listen to what others have to say uh, we can have those discussions without getting offended at every at every at, at every point along the way anyway I think that's it for the day so thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club. Um, I've had a four day off weekend. It was the CFMEU picnic day on Monday. And yesterday on Tuesday was a, red, a rostered day off. So I had plenty of time to stay home, do some work around the house and indulge in some recreation. So, uh, living um, what this author was all t you know, talking about how it's important to take some time off for self-care to take care of my wife my wife Paula um, got um, COVID-19 for the first time she's evaded, evaded it for a couple of years but copped it pretty badly over the weekend and is convalescing at home but uh, once again we've got to look after ourselves we've got to look after our families our partners uh, to make sure that we can you know, get through these these challenging years I guess uh, with all the um, health challenges that are abound abounding people all right then Take care, wishing you all the best, and we'll chat again from a different place with a different message of empowerment where we can take OPE, other people's experiences in the form of book summaries, and uh, talk about it. Learn something from other people.
because as we say and as we know that we all are unique we all are different we're different from each other but we're different for each other as well because we can't all live at the same time and experience the same things we all have different slithers of reality that we get to um, take into our lives um, you know, given that we can only get glimpses of what reality is but with the uh, benefit of books with the benefit of documentaries of vlogs like the ones I'm doing here we're able to then take other people's experiences and learn from other people and incorporate them into our skill set incorporate those patterns that other people have come across have learnt incorporate those patterns into our own patterns to help us make better decisions um, to foster better work environments better communities better, better family environments and to make us better people overall as well anyway take care wishing you all the best and we'll chat again. Bye for now.